Welcome to your introduction to Strictly Strings Book One. I'm Miss Scrotons and I'm here to guide you through all the things you need to keep track of when you get this book and get your instrument. So maybe you already have your instrument or you're choosing between violin, viola, cello, or bass. But either way, it's important to know how to take care of your instrument, the parts of the instrument, and how to hold the instrument before reading any notes or playing any notes. So first, as we journey into our Strictly Strings book, let's go into the first couple of pages. The first thing you'll notice on page two is taking care of your instrument. And many instruments have the same things that you'll see over and over again. For instance, handle with care and always make sure you are keeping track not to hurt any of the breakable parts. Do not let anyone play your instrument other than you. Even if you think it will be okay, many incidents can happen. Number three, store your instrument safely in the case when you are not playing it. And you wanna make sure the latches or the zipper is completely closed. I, I would double check before lifting the instrument. For number four, you never wanna push down on the case lid or force anything. You might have to move like violins or violas, like a shoulder rest out of the way or cellos and bass when you zip up the case. Just make sure everything is in the right place where the bow is supposed to be and then gently close the case. Number five, keep your instrument clean. And part of that is just always washing your hands, which we've gotten used to during these times before you touch your instrument or the bow. And um, then when we are done, we will all have some kind of cloth. Mine is really kind of dirty looking because I use it all the time. But we wanna make sure we wipe off rosin, which I'll show you how to put on your bow if you don't already know. And, um, you know, we can sometimes just wipe off a little extra dust that is gathered here or there on our instrument too. Going to number six, don't let your instrument get too hot or too cold. So keep it out of direct sunlight and away from any cold situations. One example is you never wanna just leave your instrument in the car, overnight especially. If you have a problem with your instrument, allow an experienced repair person to fix it. In San Mateo, Kensu Violins, they repair violin, viola, cello, and bass. It's a great person to go to if you ever notice something wrong with your instrument. But I, as your orchestra teacher, can fix a lot of things. I can fix a broken string, I can fix a bridge that has fallen over, and many other little things. Even if you notice violins and violas, your chin rest falls off. It's easy for me to put those things back on to fix fine tuners. But sometimes more serious things happen, like uh, the inside has a sound post and if something like that falls over because you dropped your instrument, well then a luthier or a repair person like Ken Sue will have to fix your instrument. Finally, number eight, make sure your bridge is lined up straight. And if you ever notice it's going a little crooked and curving over, talk to me, I can I'd make small adjustments and otherwise sometimes repairs need to be made. Let's go on to the bow. As we get into the bow, there's several things that we need to consider. Again, handle with care because it can be easily broken. I've seen the tips of bows break off when students just accidentally drop them. So you just always want to make sure you have a good grip on your bow. And even I have dropped my bow and I've gotten lucky. So it happens sometimes, but we want to try to make sure we don't drop it. Again, we keep it clean by washing our hands and um, it says, wash your hands before playing and wipe rosin and smudges off the bow stick. So if you're ever playing and you're noticing too much rosin on the stick here, you can just wipe the stick, but you never wipe the actual hair. That's just for the rosin. So when we get our cake of rosin and we apply it back and forth, just don't wanna overdo it. Sometimes it gets to be too much that it will start together on the actual stick. Avoid touching the bow hair because even though we've washed our hands, we produce oils through our skin. And when we touch it, we can, it can gather in different places along the bow. So rosin the bow regularly, usually uh, every other day works. So it just depends on how much you're practicing. But if you notice yourself in a cloud of white dust, then you've overdone it. Number five, when tightening or loosening, you want to just press slightly on the corner. And so when we loosen, just lefty loosey, turn away and, and we'll notice the bow hair gently rests against the stick. And that's how we put it away in our case, righty tighty. So as you look at it, you wanna turn right or left. So you got it righty tighty, lefty loosey. 
And violins and violas, usually a rule I use is that if you tighten it to about a pinky's distance, you don't wanna to touch the hair, but you can kind of see a pinky's distance there, that's about good. And cello and bass can be maybe more like a, a thumb, just a little, a little bit more. The main idea is when you put the bow on the string that there's a little resistance. It's not just the stick isn't plopping right down and it's not so tight that it's turning into a bow and arrow. Um, another little trick to see if you have enough rosin is you can use your thumbnail. That part doesn't have oil on it, so usually you can just go like this, and if you get like a little white line on your thumbnail, then you see you've got rosin. Next up, the parts of the instrument. We need to memorize these parts, so practice them over and over again until you can do them by heart. So let's go through together and point as you say. Scroll, pegs, peg box, nut, fingerboard, neck, top, ribs, the F hole, and that has a little line where it looks like the letter F. Here's the bridge. Inside you'll see a sound post. So if you adjust your head around, you can see a sound post. You can also sometimes see a tag that says who made the instrument, where it was made, and the year it was made, so that you know where your baby was born. And then you can give your baby a name and say, say what your baby's name is. My baby's called the Delisle. The Delisle, because it was made by a man named Bertrand Yves Delisle, so I named it after him, and it was made in Cremona, Italy in 2001. So you got a little history with your instrument too. Going on, we have our fine tuners. There should be four down here. Basses don't have fine tuners. You just have your screws at the top to tune. And that's where you're gonna use these to tune your instrument and you're gonna learn how to tune right away. I only have one because that's a professional instrument. And then we go on. After the fine tuners, we have a tail piece right here. And then you'll go into a chin rest, otherwise known as a jaw rest for violins and violas. Underneath you see a saddle right here. It's kind of tucked in right there. And then the tail gut and the end button. But cellos and bass will have a, um, what, instead of an end button, you'll have an end pin. And then you also, violins and violas, should have a shoulder rest or a sponge so you can place the instrument carefully into position. And cellos and basses will have other accessories like cellos, sometimes you'll need a rock stop or an end pin anchor so that your end pin doesn't slide around. That also can help bass players, but a lot of times bass players or cello players, if you just find some carpeted area, then your instrument will stay in place. And bass players, you'll also find some of you might need a stool while you're playing to sit on, or some of you will just stand comfortably. Let's go over the parts of the bow. Fewer parts in the violin. We start at the top where we have the tip of the bow, the bow stick, the bow hair. This area here is known as the winding and it's different on every bow. And then we have this neat little part here, the silver part called the ferrule, ferrule. And this is my favorite, the frog. And of course the tension screw or the adjusting screw to make the different tension. So, so far we've learned how to handle our instrument and bow, all the parts, and let's get into a little bit more. Turning to page four, you're gonna see a little instruction on how to hold your instrument. I recommend pausing the YouTube video and reading through it step by step and copy the picture that you see. But for a basic hold, violin students, what you want to try to do is create a feeling of comfort and on your shoulder. And violas, yours are sometimes even a little bit bigger. So the goal is when we hold our instrument that it should rest in a comfy place where the shoulder rest hugs our shoulder and our jaw, not our chin, gently rest on the jaw rest. So the idea is if you're standing tall and looking straight forward, you should be able to hold your instrument out, turn it and gently just bring it into place and, and that you shouldn't have your head all the way over like this. You shouldn't have to turn. It should be as simple as one, two, three. And then you'll see that the instrument should rest parallel to the ground. Cellos and bass in your book, you're gonna see a few other tricks for holding your instrument. And this has to do with adjusting your end pin too. So depending on your height, cellos, one thing that we can do is um, check to see the peg right here. We call that the C peg is behind your ear when you're holding it. And that you should find a comfortable place for the cello to rest against your chest 
in between your knees. And if it's going way out this way, that means you need to lower your end pin. And if it's way shrinking, it's too close to your jaw, you need to lengthen. So that C peg should be right behind your ear. And bases, one trick for you is that the nut of the instrument should be at your forehead. And so that can help decide. Now I will help as your teacher, make sure you have the right size instrument. And we can all, there's a variety of sizes. Um, violin players are anywhere from full size, like an adult size like I play, to a three quarter or even a half size. Viola players typically are a 14 inch viola, but a lot of you might start on a 13 inch viola or some you might be ready for a 15 inch. Cellos, adult size is 4'4", four, four, but most sixth graders will start with a 3'4 size or even a half size. Bass players, it's a wide spectrum. Many students start with what's called half size bass, but otherwise you might be ready for the full size, which is three quarter in the bass world. So um, my recommendation for each of you is study your pictures carefully on that holding position and practice it again and again until you find that comfy place and check that you're not experiencing any pain. You shouldn't have to scrunch up your shoulders or hunch over too much. Should be always about standing tall, sitting tall cello players while we play. We're gonna learn pizzicato position because we pluck our instrument first. So as we're holding our instrument and I am demonstrating on the violin, but viola, cello or bass, and we are holding our bow, then you can just hold it kind of what um, they, you can see the picture in the book. I sometimes refer to it as like a baseball bat if before you learn the actual bow hole. And just extend your index finger for plucking. So it's just a way to practice. And some students want to make a little anchor here at the end of the fingerboard or at the side so they get a little place to hold. Whatever is comfy. The idea is just to get a nice balance. Good, okay, so you're gonna keep practicing that and we'll talk about tuning your instrument. I'll help you get it in tune. I'll teach you how to tune it and all that good stuff. And you don't wanna to move too quickly because you might break a string if you're not careful. But when we get into the left hand playing position to actually put notes down, there's a very specific rule to follow. Cello and basses, imagine you're holding a glass of water, you're gonna take a drink and you just bring your hand around just like this curve the fingers and notice that your thumb is behind your second finger. So the idea is that we are able to curve the fingers, bring the elbow up, we don't want any turkey elbow, and roll the, roll the hand forward. Violin and viola is a little bit different as we are holding our instruments and sometimes you can get a balance like this. If you can't, then just hold it off to the side and hold out your arm like this, like you're, you're gonna give a little salute and then turn towards you. And then notice that nice shape where your hands all together. The idea is when we bring the violin or viola into that place, that it sits right in this little crook perfectly. And then the fingers just plop on down. And what you'll notice is that the thumb is across from the first finger and also that the wrist stays nice and straight for violins and violas. So again, with instrument in place, maybe use your right hand as support, hold your hand out like a stop sign, turn it towards you, bring it into place and you see the thumb is across from the first finger and we want to try and keep the wrist nice and straight when we play and so what you'll notice is when you're not paying attention sometimes that wrist collapse we call that a pancake hand we don't want any pancakes cellos and bass what we'll sometimes notice is as we get tired the arm starts to droop so we have to shake out the arm relax bring it back up that glass of water so that's one of the things you have to remind yourself it's called technique and when you have good technique, you won't have any pain in your shoulders, in your neck, and um, you'll, you'll feel comfortable when you're playing. Study pages four and five carefully and review this video to see the technique. Finally, we're going into page number six before we get started. Now, this is my favorite thing about uh, playing is that one way you can practice your bow hold is with a pencil while you're watching TV. So what we do with the pencil is study the pictures carefully and you can see this nice little shape it has. But what I like to show students is hold your pencil in your left hand, make sure you've got it in your left hand and relax your right hand down. What you'll notice when you naturally hang your hand down is all the fingers just sort of land together. They're not crazy wide apart. They're not crazy scrunched up. When you really relax your hand and um, 
you can even make like a little jellyfish just to shake it out and relax that hand, uh, is the shape of a bow hold. It's just like that. And what happens is then we just curve the thumb underneath and that's the muscle that takes some time to develop. So if you start with this kind of shape right here, and I painted my nails all pretty colors for this video. And if you bring it right here, and so for violins, usually you wanna line it up right with the knuckle, the first knuckle that right here, and bring it right there. The fingers will just fall into place, and then the thumb comes under, kind of where the middle finger is. Violins and violas, our pinky finger goes on top, cello and bass, the pinky finger comes out here. And I recommend doing that a few times. Take the pencil out, let the finger shake and relax. Bring the pencil up. Sometimes cellos and bass, it's a, up a little bit higher for you, yeah. But violas and violins here. Curving the thumb, then curving the pinky for violin and viola. And the biggest problem is that when we're not thinking about it, the knuckle's gonna go boop and start to go like this. And what that does is create tension in your arm. So you have to remind yourself to curve, curve. And you can play all kinds of fun pencil games. You can go up and down and side to side and rotate the wrist. Make sure you've got a really relaxed, comfortable bow hold. And then when you finally feel like you're good at holding a pencil, then you transfer it to the bow. So I'll show violin and viola first. As we relax violins and violas, we try to line it up around that first knuckle. And what we'll do is put the thumb in front of the frog and then the pinky goes on top. And so once you'll notice the weight is a little bit more, you can do some windshield wipers to get used to that weight and rocket ships up and down and stirring some pots. And then cellos and bass series is very similar, except sometimes you extend your fingers just a little bit more because we want the pinky over the side. And so it's, it's got a more in between the first and second joint feel but the thumb is still curved and the pinky is still over the side. We wanna make sure our wrist is relaxed. But what I'd like to mention to students is it's not all about you holding all that weight. Part of the beauty of it is when you set it on the string, you can really just relax your fingers because the bow is just sort of being supported on the string. So as you curve your thumb and relax the fingers over the side or cello and bass, that's um, part of the job of the string is to balance it and be a counterweight so you don't have to worry just about holding all that heavy bow. Once you've mastered all these skills, you'll be ready to play some songs. So review how to care for your instrument, how to open and close the case correctly, making sure it's facing the right way before you opening it, you're opening it, and that everything is out of the way before you close it. Never do anything in a hurry, never leave it in hot or cold weather, Check that you know all the parts of the instrument, that you know how to properly hold it. Once you have everything down, you're ready for the second video. Happy practicing.